telephone system presents Telephone Time. Telephone Time with the stories of John Nesbitt. How do you do? In most newspapers a few years ago, there appeared a story about a woman who had become the heroine of a winter disaster. And that, of course, happens virtually every winter. But what caught and held our attention was that Mrs. Leslie Enter was a school teacher who learned from her pupils and taught her pupils when the subject matter of the lesson was life and death for all of them. And that is some learning and some teaching. And we are calling her story Stranded. The day began like many winter days in Minnesota. It was cold, which was not unusual. It was windy, and that also was not unusual. A little snow began to fall. So the school day in rural school, District 46, began as usual. Mrs. Leslie Enter, the teacher, went to work briskly and efficiently, unaware that waiting in the clouds above was one of those blizzards that in a generation from now, people would still be remembering. It's Miss Quist. Well, she's probably brought the Knudsen children with her. I'll be right there. Jimmy, will you please turn up the heat? We're gonna have school. We're going to have school. Turn it up to 70. Good morning, Mrs. Quist. Good morning, Good morning Mrs. Enner. Good morning, children. Are we the only ones? No, no, Jimmy's inside, and I'm sure there'll be others as soon as this lets up. Children, why don't you go on in? I'll be right along. Morning, Jimmy. What's good about it? Why are you coming to school? I thought you knew everything. Does Mrs. Enner know you're playing her radio? No, Mrs. Enner doesn't know I'm playing her radio. You better not let her catch you. You better not let me catch you if you tell her. I'll get it, Shorty. Hello? Then I'll plan to pick them up at the regular time. And if there's any change, you can reach me at this number in Nicolette. I'll do that, Mrs. Quist. All right, Jimmy. You want it on the phone. Have a nice luncheon. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Jimmy, turn off that radio. Me? Turn it off and leave it off. Hello. Oh, hello, Ella. How are you this morning? Yes, we just got here. Oh, just a minute, Ella. This isn't recess time. You must do some work. And you too, Jimmy. Yes, Miss Enner. Excuse me, Ella. Well, there are only five of us so far. Why, what's the matter? Well, a lot of parents have been calling this morning to find out if there was to be school. They couldn't reach you, and I guess the storm had them worried. Well, we just got here, and everyone's all right. J just a minute. Is it bad where you are? Oh, well, B, that's one of the reasons I called you. Our number three line went out just a little while ago. And we can't be sure how long the others will stay open. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll be all right. Thanks. Yes, I'd appreciate that. Goodbye, Ella. A storm was coming up. But the schoolroom was pleasantly warm by now, and there was the usual work to be done. Make a routine check of the furnace. One of the talents of a rural school teacher lies in playing the janitor to the school furnace. Then into a pair of comfortable shoes, and off to the classroom again. For the rest of the morning, Mrs. Enter directed the minds of her pupils away from the blizzard raging about them. And as usual, her methods worked more successfully with some than with others. By the time lunch was over, however, she could no longer ignore the fact 
that the storm outside was rising beyond the usual snows of a Minnesota winter, and her thoughts went to making provisions for what might be a long day's siege. Now, I suppose you would like a recess. Can we go out and play in the snow? Oh, I'm afraid it's a little windy for that. We'll have our exercise right here. Oh, grand. Come on over to the side aisle. We'll do toe touches. I'll count. Now, everybody together. One. Keep your legs stiff. Two. No bending of the knees. Three. Four. Five. Six. Maybe the power lines are down. Hello? 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 Is anybody there? Yes, it has. Somebody's knocking at the door. That's just the wind, sweetheart. Only the wind. It was late afternoon before the citizens of Nicolette Realizing the plight of the little group stranded in rural school district 46 could marshal the forces necessary to do something about it. There's your road, Lieutenant. Nine miles of dirt. What about the bridge? We hope it'll hold. I don't know. That plow's heavy. If you pass there, we're all right. It's going to be all right, Mrs. Quist. The snowplows here from Mankato. They'll have them out in no time. I didn't know anything was wrong. I left a number where she could reach me. How long do you think it'll take to get to the school? It's what we're trying to figure. I'm on the air in exactly two minutes. Maybe they've got a radio. Plow's all warmed up and ready to go, Chief. Right away. Well, look, can you make a guess? Wouldn't be any good. It's nine miles out there. If the snow was to stop and all we had to do was break a path, I'd say, oh, maybe a mile an hour. It stays like this, no telling. Now, we'll put these plants in the furnace room. Jimmy, will you get me a candle and some paper? There. Beatrice, enter. If you or any others in the schoolhouse are listening, help is on the way. A snowplow has started up north along the Gaylord Nicolet Road. Betty Lou, would you please bring the me the map? The car will follow the highway as best it can. It's still snowing heavily. No sign of relief. 
and for that reason, no accurate estimate can be made as to how long it will take the rescue party to reach the school, which is just a shade over nine miles from this point. If you are listening, Mrs. Enter, Jimmy, and everybody concerned... you told me to get more we'll wood. posted on every new development in this rescue attempt. Now, this is Jerry Ferguson speaking to you from KMT's mobile unit and switching you back to our studios. Thank you, Jerry. On the national news front today... It's the last of the desk, Mrs. Enter. ...words for Wendell Wilkie. Didn't I tell you they'd be coming for us? I'm hungry. You promised we'll have a party, Mrs. Enter. Well, that's just what we're going to do right now. We're going to have a story, too? Yes. Jimmy's going to tell us one. Me? You. I don't know any stories. Oh, sure you do, James. A smart guy like you ought to know at least one story. Something simple. Like a nursery story. That won't strain your brain. Harold, are you looking for a hit in the head? No, 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 come on. That will be enough. Jimmy, start your story. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They were three of the piggiest pigs you ever saw in your life. Always stuffing themselves. Two of them were girl pigs. And the third was a half-pint boy pig. Mrs. Enner, he's talking about us. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's pretend that I am the mother bear. You are all the little bears. And let's cuddle. And then we'll, we'll hibernate. Once upon a time, there were two people who were sad and lonely and wishing they could hear a cheery word. One was named Timothy Thomas, and he spent all his time playing tic-tac-toe by himself. And the other was his friend, Tessie Tinker. She spent all her time playing tiddlywinks by herself. And once upon the same time, there was a little girl named Dolly Fone, and she spent all her time making people happy. So one day, she zipped up to Timothy Thomas and stopped him right in the middle of a tic-tac. Say, Timothy Thomas, don't you think it'd be fun to telephone Tessie Tinker? But she wouldn't want to hear from me. Oh, I'll fix that. So she zipped away to Tessie Tinker and stopped her right in the middle of a tiddly. Say, Tessie Tinker, don't you think it'd be fun to get a phone call from Timothy Thomas? But he wouldn't want to telephone me. Oh, I'll fix that. So she zipped back to Timothy Thomas. Now, Timothy Thomas, it's a perfect time to telephone Tessie Tinker. So Timothy Thomas telephoned Tessie Tinker, and that made two people very happy. But Dolly Phone had other people to make happy, too. Tall people in short hills. Short people in high point. Busy people in sleepy hollow. Sleepy people in wake forest. The little people in big spring. Big people in Little Rock. Millions of people who would find happiness and good times through Dolly Phone's help. Meantime, Timothy Thomas and Tessie Tinker turned out to be the happiest people of all. And neither one was lonely anymore. Whenever you want to be happy, just call on me, Dolly Phone. Five hours now. Five long hours since this rescue caravan set out from Nicolette. And in that time, we have covered exactly two and one half miles. As you doubtless know, if you live in this part of the state, 
The storm has not abated, nor is it expected to at any time before tomorrow morning, according to the most hopeful estimate the weatherman will give us. Now this is Jerry Ferguson turning you back to the program which is in progress. Hello? 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 Oh, yes. No, Miss Quist, I'm sorry, that line's still down. But they're working on it, so don't you worry. Why don't you go back to your sisters and try to get a little sleep? No. I have to stay here. In case they call. I miss it. It's midnight. It's too long. Too long. How long can they last now? There is a time limit as to how much sub-freezing cold an adult can stand. With children, it would be even shorter. But how long is it? How many hours? While you were all asleep, I heard the latest report on the radio.
Now, there is the schoolhouse. Now, here is the road that the snow plow is traveling. Now, the announcer said that the plow had only been two and a half miles since it started. So, we must do something. If you saw these lines on a map, what would you think they were? It could be a small river. Yes, it was a small river, but it's been dried up for years. Why, well, that looks like part of the old gully that runs along behind the school. Well, that's exactly what it is. Now, if we were to walk through this gully west for three quarters of a mile, where would that lead us? Why, well, we'd come to Sandy Creek Bridge. That is right. Where the highway passes over it. Hey, we might even meet up with the snowplow that's trying to get us. You have a good idea. Well, thanks. We have to be sure that we get to the bridge at the same time as the snowplow. Why? Because if we get there too soon, we'll have to wait in the cold. And if we get there too late, well... That's right, Jimmy. March, march single file. Mavis, you first. Harold, that's right. Jimmy, you go last. Now, each of you take, take the hand of the person in front of you. Now, remember, no loitering or stopping to rest, no matter how tired you get. Are we ready?
after a story has ended, it is always a pleasure, when we can, to get the reaction of one of the actual persons involved. And so, after the announcement, we're going to have another of our living footnotes. When you call someone out of town, here are some hints that really work. Give the operator the telephone number you want, instead of just the name and address. That way, your calls go through twice as fast. And you can keep a handy list of telephone numbers in this attractive blue book. It's a personal telephone directory your telephone company will be glad to give you free. On your next out-of-town call, call by number. It's so much easier and quicker for you. I hope that Mrs. Enter doesn't keep me after school for calling her a footnote, but it's one of our customs around here. And both Miss Davis, who reenacted her, and myself have wondered just what the experience still means to you today. It was an experience that could have happened to any teacher in a one-room schoolhouse. There are many such schools standing today, more than people realize. And I also imagine it must be a great deal of hard work. Oh, no. I enjoyed it. I learned a great deal there. In fact, I look at this not as my story, but as the children's story. Mm. And I knew she was going to say just that. And yet, many of those children must be almost grown-ups by now. And I will bet that when there's a heavy winter snowfall, they remember, and they think of the story not as theirs, but yours. And thank you so much for being with us. In this pleasant living room, we shall meet Victoria Harrington, whose courage and devotion to her son Johnny made front pages of the news and carried her through an ordeal that few mothers have ever experienced. The story of that terror that swept into her secure, snug little home in Millen, Georgia, which we will call The Intruder. And until next week, this is John Nesbitt wishing a goodbye to you all. Join us for Telephone Time next week. Until then, we remain sincerely yours, the Bell Telephone System.